PS Remoting or PowerShell Remoting allows you to execute commands against remote computers. Now there's about three different ways to do this. The first one of them is using the dash computer name command or option in your commandlets. So some commandlets like let's do a get help on get service. I'm gonna pipe that to more. You're gonna see some of these have a dash computer name. Now using dash computer name here does not require that you use PS remoting. However, to get more tools like entering PS sessions or invoking commands, which we'll talk about in a couple of subsequent videos, those do require using PS Remoting. Now to set up PS Remoting, there are a couple of ways to do it. You can do it through group policies. And honestly, if you're working with a large number of computers, if you're working in a domain network or something like that, using group policies makes a lot of sense. Because then we can create a group policy and it will actually be, or be pushed out to all of our devices that you know, are under that group policy, and it'll enable the PS Remoting tools, which, by the way, uses the WinRM, or Windows Remote Management. The other way to do it is manually on each device. And to do that, we have to create firewall exceptions, and we have to uh, enable the WinRM service. And There's a handful of things that we have to do. Now, the easy way to do that is using the command enable see if I can type enable, dash PS remoting. And that will automatically enable it for us. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And it goes through and starts making a bunch of changes. Now it will create a firewall entry for us, but it'll only work if we're using Windows Firewall. If we're using another firewall, then we're gonna go ahead and have to enable that manually. But if we are enabling, or if we are using the Windows Firewall, then it automatically sets that up. So here you're gonna see WinRM is ready to set up, uh, is already set up to receive remote requests, and is already set up for remote management. Now, if I hadn't, let's go ahead and disable that. So I can turn it off if I'm tired of using it using the disable dash PS remoting, and that will turn it on. It's gonna throw this warning. Disabling it will on blah, blah, blah. All right, by the way, you have to be an administrator in order to do this. And PS remoting is normally enabled only for administrator set, administrative uh, users. All right, so disabling the session configurations is not undo all the changes. You might have to manually, and here's a list of things that you can do. And then to re-enable it, enable dash PS remoting. And since I actually want it enabled, I'm going to go ahead and leave it enabled here. So just be aware that this will enable it, this will disable it, although you'll notice that if you really want to clean it up, you're going to have to do some of it manually. Now, there is one error that's very, very common for people to get, and it's a big, long error, and if you read through it, it'll tell you exactly what it is. But it's the most common error we get when we're using PS Remoting, or trying to enable PS Remoting, and that is PS Remoting will not enable if one of the network adapters in your system is set to a public profile. That'll keep it from working. It needs to be set for all of your network adapters have to be set for private profiles for the enabled PS remoting to work. So if you get that message, go into your network settings, look at the profiles for your different network adapters, make sure all of them are set to a private profile, that should take care of that issue. All right, so for enabling PS remoting, that's pretty much all there is, just those two. Enable it to activate it, disable it to turn it back off. And at this point, PS Remoting should be set up. Now remember, you can also do this through GPOs or you can do this manual. If you're doing a large number of computers in a domain environment, GPOs work a whole heck of a lot better. If you are doing it in a small network then and you or you don't want to apply it to everybody and you don't want to you know, rebuild a bunch of group policy objects, if you're just doing a small number of computers, then enabled PS Remoting works well. Also be aware that PS Remoting by default is enabled on all Windows servers, but not enabled on all Windows clients. So for your servers, if you want to be able to manage them remotely using PowerShell, you don't necessarily have to enable this for everything. All right, so that's about all there is to enabling PS Remoting. One more thing that I just want to let you know, 
PS remoting works a lot better. It's a lot smoother and easier if you are remoting between machines that are on the same domain. There are ways to execute some of these commands <clears throat> to enable enter PS sessions and invoke commands on computers that are not part of your domain or an associated trusted domain, but it's a little more complicated. It works really, really well if you're logged in as an administrator on the domain, as a domain admin, and you're connecting to a device on the same domain. That's going to make your life a whole lot easier when it comes to PS remoting and executing commands or full PS sessions on remote devices.